decisions, and then we'll go right to new business with Commissioner Abel while he's still on the line. So I'll, I'll lead us here, I pledge allegiance to the flag to the flag. United States of America, America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible liberty, justice for all. We'll get to minutes later. Uh, a new business item which we added today uh, was requested by Commissioner Abel, and he's joined us on the line in between various meetings and commitments. And this is regarding some playground equipment or repairs, perhaps updates, modifications, et cetera, in a few parks. Commissioner Abel, the floor is all yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And actually, actually um, you know, I, I'd like to <clears throat> hand it over to, to Tammy and, and okay. just hear an, an mm -hmm. update uh, okay. and, and just a little bit of background, just a little bit of background. I, you know, I had received an email and, and I mean, this is where, you know, the you know, local community, it, it really requires a partnership between the neighbors and, and, um, and, and the township. And I received an email from uh, a neighbor a, a few days ago with some pictures of uh, playground equipment at Philip Home Park, expressing some concerns where, they, where she had seen some cracks or, or some uh, bumps in the plastic and, and was really concerned with kids coming down on there and, and either getting caught or, or, or getting scratched. So I reached out to the township and to Tammy and to, uh, to their credit, you know, they were out there within minutes um, identified the issue and had um, relayed to me that they were going to close down um, and, and keep uh, the kids in the neighborhood off those pieces of equipment and then take it a, take it a step further, even look at other neighboring parks um, just to make sure that equipment is in good shape for, for children to be on. So, you know, I want to thank the neighbors for reaching out and I want to thank the township for being so proactive and, um, and responsive to um, making sure that you know, anyone utilizing our playgrounds is doing so in a, in a safe manner. Thank you, Commissioner Abel. Um, so first of all, you're absolutely right. It does take a partnership. Um, it's just impossible for everybody to be in every single location 100% of the time, especially right now when we're coming out of the, the winter craziness and season um, and jumping into some really nice days that kind of hit us all of a sudden. So um, although the guys have it on their list every season to get out and check on things, it just you know, that's one of those things that they were in the process of doing and, and here just have not had a chance to get over to that site to to spot these just yet. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, those residents for doing that. And, and honestly, like the playgrounds are something to continually keep up with, as you know, along with all the rest of the amenities in the park. There's just so many pieces and parts and structures. Um, and it's, you know, hard to, to know exactly, you know, when things go wrong. So we rely so heavily, um, you know, on the on the uh, parts of all the staff, uh, the staff, the uh, members of the community to let us know, uh, you know, what's going on. So just an update in terms of Bo Connor. Uh, so Bo, Bo Connor has a, a has two play structures, uh, one for younger kids that's sort of designed as like a, you know, two to five set and then like a five to 12 set uh, with five sliding boards uh, total. Um, I think there's three on the one, uh, the older kids set and then two on the younger kids uh, play set. Uh, so the, this actually happens to be uh, a, a playground that was installed in 1997. So you're talking about considerable age. Uh, you know, usually once we reach the 20 year mark, uh, you know, 20, 25 year mark, you know, you start having a lot of issues. Uh, and in this case, you know, we end up where there are pieces and parts that just can't be uh, necessarily replaced, but have to be retrofitted in some way. Uh, so it's something that we are experiencing across several parks like Cowan, Odoricio, um, Petrie, you know, is another one that's, that's also aging, even though we did replace some equipment there recently. But in terms of O'Connor, uh, what we've done is we've been able to work with Playworld Systems, who is the manufacturer. So they manufactured this equipment actually right here in Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're somewhere, uh, I believe up near where the Little League World Series is played, Williamsport, uh, somewhere west of there. But in any case, they were able to find uh, a, find a slide replacements that would fit. Um, unfortunately, the ones that are there have to be completely pulled out and they're buried in the ground in, in concrete footers. Uh, so it is quite a production. It's not something we can just, you know, sort of receive the slides and do very quickly. It's, it's, it's a little bit of an extensive job. Uh, so right now we're in the process of making sure we get the correct size of slides that are going to fit uh, and then make sure that they 
uh, match up to the openings um, that are there, you know, on the structure uh, and match all the correct heights and widths and things like that. So uh, we were able to get uh, a bunch of specs back from Play World. There's a representative that we work with um, and we think we've, we've been able to find the fits. Um, and there is a local installer who's a Play World certified installer uh, that, you know, once we receive um, well, once we order and receive the slides, we'll be able to install those. But right now I just don't have a timeline um, because I'm uncertain at this point if those are slides that they stock or if they're gonna have to be produced in some way. Um, we're just trying to get the correct sizing and fitting aligned uh, because a lot of the ways that things were made you know, 25 years ago, it's just not the same today. Um, you know, pieces and parts are different and things are, are fitted in, in a lot of different ways. So in, in this case, basically what's happened just to describe is that in the way the, the, the underside of the sliding board is installed, there are, uh, there are like parts and pieces where the screws are sort of mounted underneath. And over time, when you put pressure on the plastic, um, and the mold, the molding on the slide, you know, from kids, you know, they stand up on them, you know, they stand up and they run up them. It puts a lot of pressure and in time around those screws, they, they tend to wear and then you end up having popping that comes up and through. So that's a lot of what's happened. Um, that and just UV over time wears these pieces and parts down. Um, you know, we just, we don't always really think about UV and what it does to uh, equipment, but it really breaks it down pretty significantly. So that's a, a circumstance of what we've had there, uh, along with age and wear. Uh, so I'm hoping that tomorrow we can finalize exactly what we need and get our order placed. So Rick went out today. Uh, he's our park supervisor, as you guys know, Rick Foster. He took all the measurements. I compared them to the spec sheet that Play World sent us. And we're going to try to fit exactly what we need. Um, the only curveball that might happen is we might end up having to have a, a contractor come out and actually take a look at it just to make sure we have the right fit before we place the order. Um, so that's sort of where we are there. And then taking it a step further, we also, when, when we learned about the, the slides over at Bo Connor, the guys did just, they did get around um, actually on, I think it was Tuesday. Uh, to take a look at the other playgrounds because I especially wanted them to go to Odorisio because it's another playground that's 20, you know, 25, 27 years old. And then Cowan is another one in that ballpark as well, all built in the mid 1990s. Um, and what we found is that there was a similar situation with the slide over at Odorisio. Uh, and then also um, of, of concern is at Cowan, uh, there's, a, there's a transfer platform that is sort of like a uh, swinging drawbridge, so to speak, that you walk across. Uh, it connects two platforms together. Really fun item, you know, that kids kind of jump on and sway on a little bit, like a little drawbridge. Uh, that one is completely broken down and rusted out. Uh, there is significant deterioration on the underside of it. The guys were working on a sort of like a fix for it, just a temporary fix. But in the meantime, I'm also working with Play World. This happens to be another Play World item um, from what was installed in the mid 1990s uh, from that manufacturer. And we're looking at a couple different options of what we'll replace it with potentially. Because unfortunately the one that was made um, back when we had it installed is no longer manufactured. They stopped making it like 15 years ago. So that's another issue we start to get into with the equipment, as I mentioned before, you know, pieces and parts just tend, they don't fit the same, they're not made the same, they're different sizing, they're different quality. Um, so there's a lot of changes that happen over the years. Uh, so the goal is to get that piece re, uh, replaced as well. Uh, so we're in the process of making sure we um, understand what our options are. I know there are only two options, unfortunately. One is like a, it's like a mat, a matting system, like a rubber matting that you go across. And the other one is a planking system, but it has gaps and openings in it, um, which I'm not a big fan of because then kids could, you know, their foot can kind of slide through those. But those were our only two options on that one. So we're going to try and make sure we get all the right fittings. Um, we, may, we may have to replace parts of a deck on each side to make that one work and make that fit. Um, so that's going to get into a little bit more of an expense, of course. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's, you know, in an ideal world, we'd be having these uh, playgrounds replaced, you know, sometime soon. And we're obviously getting to that point. Um, we're seeing a lot of powder coating breakdown on a lot of the, the steps 
and the transfer areas and the decking. So that's like a coating that's sprayed on the fixtures. Um, and then over time, it starts to wear off and peel, it breaks down. And then you have rust start, uh, you know, underneath and water gets in and it causes a lot of, a lot of deterioration. And once that water starts to penetrate in, it just, it just goes from there. You can't stop it, um, you know, unless you have those things fixed. So um, North Wayne is another one too. That one, when, that one I believe was installed in 1999. So um, I know we have to get over and check on that one. Although they, they may have been over there already. I know they were trying to get around everywhere. So we're working as quickly as possible. Um, and Play World's been great too. Our representative, representative is you know, answering emails to me at like you know, six and seven o'clock at night, um, working through this stuff as I'm getting back to her and vice versa. So um, the wild card is just going to be uh, making sure we figure out what, what we need and then how long it takes to ship these items to get them installed. So that's where we are. Because I, you know, I have to believe at this point, you know, having an emergency replacement of an entire, you know, playground isn't really feasible unless we make a decision, you know, we want to just shut them, you know, shut those slides down and those parts of the playground down, um, which it, you know, it seems like, you know, for relatively small amount of money, you know, relative to the size, you know, the cost of a real playground, you know, seems like something we want to move forward with, um, you know, especially given, you know, timing and everything, you know, where it's spring and everybody's going to be out there running around. So the guys are trying to check on them every day too. We've caution taped uh, the slides so that they're, you know, quarantined so folks can't get on them. Um, so but people tend to break through that stuff. It can be exciting at times, I think, for kids to sort of rip that stuff down. We see that happen a lot. Public Works is trying to get around to look at those things each day just to make sure that it's it's secure uh, so no one gets hurt. Hey, Terry, thanks for the uh, thanks for the, thanks for the summary and and um, the explanation and the, and, the, and the next steps. Uh, when, when you get a time frame, will you just uh, one post on the on the website and two, um, you know, I'd like to be made aware and, and then I can mm -hmm. push that out to neighbors just so they understand um, the process and, 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 and the next steps and when they can expect to be back on the playground. Sure. And the playground is open. Um, it's no, no, just I know, those... I know, but okay. I meant full access. Okay. Yep. Understandable. Absolutely. Um, as soon as we understand that, uh, I'll get that information out to you guys right away. Like I said, I hope to have a little bit more of an idea of a timeline if these items are going to be shipped, how long that's going to take. Um, and then I can probably connect with the installer uh, either tomorrow or Monday to find out how, you know, how long it would take for them, you know, see if, how, where we would be in their queue, you know, as far as uh, coming out to actually do the repair. Sounds great. Thanks. Thanks again to everybody involved in, in um, taking care of that right away. No problem. Absolutely. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Commissioner uh, Abel. Tammy, is there any? Uh, I, I, it sounds like the twenty-year mark is is sort of where we start to, I want to say start to, but uh, from history, know that there's going to be a breakdown. I, I assume we don't have any type of scheduled replacement or uh, of this equipment. And, it, and if not, has that been an, an idea which has been discussed before and is it feasible? Yeah, I mean, these playgrounds have all been in the capital budget, um, you know, for the last several years. Um, you know, we, we had hoped that when we did the improvements at Bo Connor that the playground was going to be part of that. Uh, and it was supposed to be part of that, but that was something that was unfortunately removed um, because the dollar amount just you know, I guess just exceeded where um, it was desired to be. So the, the amount of money that we had that was there to replace that playground was removed. I'm, I'm not sure where else it went or if it was just omitted entirely from the parks and trail bond money that we, you know, that we borrowed back in 2016. Um, the same way with Odorisio. Um, that was uh, part of, you know, that was desired, at least on behalf of administration, to be part of that bond as well. Um, and that one was one that was remo removed from that too. So, so subsequently, those became items that then just continued to fall into the capital budget, as with Cowan, as with North Wayne. Um, you know, Petrie is one that would have been would become slotted in now, 
um, but as you know, we haven't operated with a capital budget for the last several years. So it's made it difficult to really adhere to that level of planning. Um, when these were replaced in the 1990s, I mean, you know, Cowan was in 94, Odoricio was in 96, Bo Connor was in 97, North Wayne was in 99. Petrie, obviously, which was a new park and veterans were developed in 2000. So as you could see, like there was very strategic planning, you know, every year there was replacement um, and or for some of these, it might've been the initial installation. Um, so that's sort of the process, you know, we have to try and get to so that we're not sitting here staring at all of these improvements at once, um, but trying to ration them out, you know, over the course of several years. So getting back to that capital budget is going to be key to making that happen. Thank you. Anyone else with comments or questions on uh, the issue on the floor with the uh, playground equipment at the various parks we've talked about? Amy, are the replacement parts part of the just the general maintenance and repair budget for the township? Uh, the, well, in this case, so in this case, they they probably wouldn't be, but they're they're going to have to come out of some operating fund in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I know that replacement bridge that I was talking about at Cowan alone was about thirty five hundred dollars. Um, so thirty five hundred dollars in the grand scheme of the park's operating budget is a really big deal. Um, and then you tack on, you know, three slides that are probably going to be at least a thousand to two thousand dollars each. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got installation that's going to come along with that, which is removal and installation by a contractor. And honestly, I don't have an order of magnitude of what that cost is going to be. I'm not sure where contractors fees are right now for, you know, sort of a, a spot replacement, if you will, in a, in a park. Um, I have an idea of what it costs, you know, in terms of a, a major renovation and a brand new playground um, in terms of installation, but I'm, I'm not sure. So, you know, we could be upwards of, you know, $10,000, $8,000, you know, once it's all said and done. And, you know, that's a pretty hardy item, you know, when you're looking at operating dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, not to, not, not to evade your question in any way, but it would, it ha it'll have to come out somewhere. Okay. All right. A anyone else on the topic? All right, I'm going to I'm going to continue the pattern of the last couple of weeks of jumping around. I know we Commissioner Abel is still on the line, and I know that the uh, mountain bike trail issue does show up as old business on our agenda. And um, while he is on the line, we could raise that uh, at this time. I don't know if Commissioner Abel, if you had anything to add, uh, update, etc. I, I I know that we had left it last with uh, some brainstorming going on and and a thought of trying to cast a wider net to get uh, some community input, and obviously. Through this form, we're somewhat limited in that regard. But uh, with that preface, any anything uh, to add, or you care to add, uh, comment on, uh, Commissioner? No, no, and, and thanks again for including this on the agenda. I don't have I don't have anything on, on my uh, on my end to add. Um, you know, I'm I'm actually just um, you know awaiting um, either from the, the parks board or for from the uh, the, the township um, and, and let me know how they how you want to proceed. Um, do you guys want to take lead? Would you want, do you want me to put together a, a town hall style meeting either in person at a park or a zoom call uh, and, and just start having, um, you know, more detailed discussions with the neighbors um, so we can start to, you know, see a path forward um, wherever that may take us. So, so I guess to answer your question, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking for guidance on, on how you want me to be involved either you know, take the lead and, and set up a meeting or um, be more of a, of a conduit and, and get the message out that the township is going to host a meeting and, and get people there. Okay. And I appreciate that. And, and I, I guess this board would have to kick that around a little bit and see how we wish to proceed and whether it, it, it's going to be something directed from a township or from your end, or if it's something we're going to put on our agenda for a meeting down the road. Um, the concern I have with with the, the last option is that uh, I'm not really quite sure when we're going to get to that point where we have in-person meetings, which are really, um, I think, critical for this kind of dynamic discussion about whether it be this topic or other topics we've had before the board. I don't, I don't know if others have some thoughts on, on this and just from a procedural standpoint, how we want to move forward from here. I think there is definitely interest that I've sensed to talk about this and, and, and do bring it forward in some type of a public forum, but I don't know if we've kicked it around on nuts and bolts of that. And I, I know I, that, go ahead. 
No, go ahead, Howard. Go ahead, Tammy. Go ahead. No, I'll, I was just going to say, I mean, from on the township's perspective, um, you know, we would love to lead the charge. Um, and then, you know, Commissioner, just to sort of jump in there with your regard, um, you know, if there's ways that you could help us, you know, spread the word, you know, disseminate about, you know, sort of the goals and objectives of, of what's there. Um, I think that would be great. Um, you know, any mailers and things like that, letters and stuff, emails, um, website updates, you know, the township can definitely take the lead on all of those pieces, but obviously with the help of everyone else, um, cause I feel like the, you know, the more people that can be involved, especially in the neighborhoods, the better, um, I could go on further, but Howard, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 I actually have to transition. I'm going to be turning my camera off, but I'm still going to be on. I just, I have to take my son to baseball now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, good luck with that. <laughs> um, um, I, I was just going to say, I, I, I mean, even with the um, talking about the bike trail um, and we're, we're also interested at, at this time, we started off discussions about you know, some renovations to the park. Are we gonna put that ahead of what we're trying to do as, as with the park as a whole? I mean, because we haven't even, you know, began to uh, address some of the things that need to be done in the park first. And we were trying to get the neighbors together, you know, to, to, to make sure that everybody has a say in that as well. So I'm, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just trying to ask, how far ahead are we going to go with the park, with the uh, with the trail ahead of what we want to do for the addressing the whole park issue anyway? And I'm not sure, Howard, if if, if you were with us last time or not. I, I do I just don't recall. But the, the discussion somewhat morphed uh, from the mountain bike into Odoricio, and and there was definitely some consideration of both. And and I think at least a point that I think I made at that point in time was these are two, these are two separate issues. I, I think the conventional or the, the consensus wisdom, so to speak, is that the Odoricio is not ideally suited for a mountain bike trail. Uh, it might be oh. suited for a, a, for a walking path or trail, but it, it just seems as though from talking to folks that do the mountain biking, as well as perhaps the residents and maybe the, the particular layout there, that's probably, I would say it's all off the table, but it, it does not seem to be the, the lead uh, destination for it. And I don't know that we have any menu of destinations at this point. Okay. All right. So, so I know that uh, 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 Claire and you and I have met you know, before COVID hit to try to talk generally about the, the Odoricio thing. I, I see these as two, I think what they're probably two different things at this point. Okay. I'm certainly happy to participate and, and see what this board can do to try to start building that process, which is going to take us some time with the, the residents and, and, and the community on Odoricio, a, a, as well as the mountain bike. I, I don't know that there's a, a stacking of one before the other. I, I certainly see Odoricio as a, as a priority, uh, ultimately, uh, as well. Um, and I think the mountain biking uh, trail is also, a, you know, a folks place priority okay. on that as well. Okay. I don't know if it, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I, I've got to jump off and, and get on. Um, the exact session call, but um, ju just to respond to Howard's question and, and Howard, it's a, a very good question. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, my, my hope would be, um, you know, all these topics, I, I mean, w whenever we can get the neighbors together to talk about Odoricio Park, I mean, I would like to have all these uh, issues as part of the conversation so we can kind of lay out what we think the future vision of the park is. I mean, how do, how do we want the park to, to look and operate over the next 20 to 30 years and, and, and be utilized by the neighbors? Um, so, so, if, so if neighbors want to talk about mountain biking, uh, I think, I think my, my takeaway from the last call, last conversation last month was Odoricio wouldn't be conducive to a mountain biking um, path you know, for like competition because the team was too big. Uh, I mean, it, it, it may, it, we may want to look at it for, um, you, know, you know, to have a path there for people to walk on or for one or two kids, you know, if, if the, the kids in the neighborhood just want to bring their bikes over and ride, that might be something uh, that we want to explore. But, you know, ultimately, I think that's a conversation between the township and, and, and the neighbors to see how, how we think that park can be utilized the best over, over the next, you know, several decades. Yeah, 
because I because I, I, I think I remember something. One of the comments saying that the 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 the, the bicycle club itself had outgrown what the what the usage of the park had had been. So yes, I, I remember that now. Yeah, I apologize for that. And, and I yeah. And Good, good, Commissioner. Sorry, I was just going to say that I agree, I agree with that that comment. I, that's uh, how I understand it too. That um, the 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 team has outgrown that park for for practice or competition. Um, not to say if 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 it's a if it's a good fit that it might be a uh, a place where people can just go and, and ride and, and and hang out, um, or or you know a path could be there for walking. If, if again, ultimately, if that's what the neighbors and the township believe is a is the a, a great use of that area. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and Howard, from my perspective, I think as soon as we can, and, and health restrictions uh, are lifted to the extent we can, I would like part of whether it's as part of this board or just members of the board doing it. I think some type of a town hall. Or some type of dialogue on Odoricio is is essential. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we got sidetracked for a year and a half, and hey, well, I think <laughs> yeah. sidetracked. But um, I, I certainly, and in some level, that's easier because I think I, I think that park falls in Commissioner Abel's ward, if I'm not mistaken. The communications um, are, are maybe easier to set up than on the mountain biking, which I think has to be a little bit broader base because we haven't decided if and, and where something like that would land. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, um, it's Tammy. Um, I, I did have a chance to meet with members of the boards, uh, the board of the Radnor Township Civic Association, which is located uh, real close to the park. And they had, um, you know, we well, first of all, we're just talking about some different partnership, uh, you know, ideas and things like that. And they have a lot of interest in getting more people to their facility um, and raising awareness for it as a community center. Um, for the whole community, not just for the, the folks that live over there on Highland, Highland Avenue. Um, and, and I had asked them if they might be willing to, to host, you know, some sort of a community meeting in some way. And they were fully on board and excited about that opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, it's not something we're going to be able to do, you know, soon. Um, but hopefully, you know, uh, on the horizon, that's an opportunity for us that sits there as well, where, you know, we'd have the opportunity to, to walk the park and be in the park, um, you know, and, and go over and like visualize, you know, things that are there, but then come back to the community center and actually have, you know, a little bit more of a formal setting. That sounds like a great idea, Tim. I'm happy to hear that. And, and as a matter of fact, that's where we, we started off last year when we had one or two meetings there just before the COVID hit. So yes, yes we did. Yeah, they're, they're more than willing to uh, make themselves accessible there. That's great. I, I, I didn't mean to sidetrack things to, to, to Odorisa. I know Commissioner Abel has to jump off and he may have already jumped off. Um, in terms of thoughts on how we proceed uh, on the mountain bike issue, I know Tammy suggested a community uh, township might be able, able to do that. What, what role does this board wish to play on that uh, topic at this point to try to uh, help uh, work towards a consensus? You're on mute, Mary. You're on are mute. We expected to make a, are we expected to make a recommendation or is it just sort of a courtesy or something we could do if we wanted to? I, th I think right now it's just a dialogue uh, about if and what we wish to do um, on the topic, and, and if we wish to be involved and, and to, to be part of the dialogue, then we can you know, figure out. But I think ultimately, um, at least I think Commissioner Abel's vision is is that we would at some point have a recommendation on that topic. Um, yeah, I which, agree with that. Um, Mary, Mary, you were you were muted and, and we're. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I forgot I was muted. Um, That's okay. I, almost, I almost never do that to myself. Um, <laughs> Are, are we talking about proceeding with some deliberations on mountain biking generally somewhere in the township? Or are we still talking specifically about yes or no for Odoricio for, for mountain biking? I thought that the, the way it was presented, it was more of a general uh, yeah. conversation as opposed to just specific, as, as, at least as I interpreted, at least for, for as of 2020 or 2019 when we talked about it, 
the ship had sailed on Odoricio. As, as yeah, okay. As, there, was, there was concerns logistically as well as some, some resident opposition, which probably made that not a feasible place. So do, are we talking about us, chickens here um, in Parks and Rec, um, sort of being proactive on exploring the mountain biking thing? Or do we feel that there really is an interest in it? Is that something we want to invest in? Do we know that there's interest in it? That, that's sort of where I'm getting at is if it's, I don't know why we would be, I have no problem either way, but I don't know why we would be proactive on something if there's no real impetus for it. Is there, is there an interest in having mountain biking generally? Or was this a one-time thing a year or two ago by a group of people and they've sort of lost interest in Odoricio? Thanks for that question. It's a good question. Yeah, and my sense is, I think that's probably part of a process is to figure that out. If, if it's just a, a finite, limited group of folks, well, then I don't think we generally undertake things as a township, um, generally, I should say, to, to suit the needs of a small- Yeah, if, if there's not a felt need. I mean, if, the, you right. know, if there's a real clamoring for it, I mean, I'm, you know, all right, then I think that's our job. But if, if there's real no, no real interest and in, I'm thinking, okay, well, let's move on to, you know, the other topics. Um, so that's why I wanted to clarify that. Well, the, if I could jump in too, the, the other thing we have to understand though too is to what layer of need for mountain biking is there? Um, you know, there's so many different layers and levels. And I think what the mountain bike team necessarily was looking for, um, you, know, you know, in terms of more of a training space or more of a, you know, get ready for competitive type space might be different than, you know, just your, you know, average, you know, lower level, meaning like a low level, like a level one recreational type. Right. Yeah. Recreational mountain bike trail. I mean, I did have an opportunity to meet with uh, a member of the, um, sorry, it was weird. Somebody just threw something at my car as I was driving. <laughs> um, There's a no vote for the mountain biking trail, I guess. Uh, what's what, what that was really strange I, I don't know what he threw at my car um just uh, two people walking their dogs in collegeville throwing something at my car um anyways so i had a chance to have a meeting uh with a with a planner a mountain biking um design and planning firm that's called trail solutions and they're out of the imba which is the international mountain bicycling uh, association uh, of america and I sat on probably what was about a, an hour, an hour and a half long uh, call and presentation with him. And there's just so much I learned about the different levels and layers of mountain bike trails that exist out there. Um, and they actually do have a leveling, you know, of, of what they entail in terms of difficulty and steeps. And, you know, I learned about things like skinnies and stuff that you ride over and planks and all kinds of stuff that exist out there. Um, so I think that's where if we're, we're going to you know, consider this, you know, we have to understand, you know, what level of need is really there? Because I, I feel like your basic, you know, everyday mountain bike, you know, mountain bike trail, you know, just for recreational purposes is much different than what the team was looking for. Um, and I, I don't think we understand really where the community is, you know, community need is right now um, in either direction. So I think there is a, la a layer of ambiguity um, that sits there. And I haven't heard from that group again. Um, they, they've, mm. I'm not aware of what their needs are. They have found a solution for what they're looking for. So I, you know, I think at some point we do have to hear from them um, and, and where they are, and then you know, kind of take that into consideration on you know, what, you know, what would our overall goals be with this, you know, township wide, um, if, we, if we were evaluating additional spaces or you know, spaces that could accommodate this that obviously you know, may not be Odorisio for the various reasons that were just noted. Seems like you would need a vast amount of space to have a viable uh, alternative to what people are doing. How many miles is the minimum three to five miles? Is something a, uh, I'm just looking at, you know, bike trails that I've been on before, you you go for miles um, as opposed to, do we put in, you know, I'm I'm look, look, feeling size and thinking of the parks in my head and where where is that possibly viable to have something that, you know, unless it goes off and through the township other ways. I think Mr. Hemingway summed it up beautifully. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Since the last early for next year, next December, I'm working my way. 
It looks great, man. I, I, it's you definitely turned up the volume on the Hemingway. It looks great, man. Thank you. <laughs> it's my kids pay attention at school. Yeah, <laughs> it's him. <laughs> no, but that that was my concern. You know, it's just sort of like that's a huge undertaking. Um, you know, the path, the walking path, of course, took years of development, and this is something that, again, once we determine a need how vast a space is required. So that's, but I, I would be all for, I mean, if, you know, not as the top priority, but putting together a, a commission or some kind of meeting, I think when the weather, when, when we can see people face to face, maybe have that on agenda next fall, uh, where we could sit and talk to people and invite them for comments and have some of the experts come in, like Tammy said, and we could really get some, uh, you know, a finger on the pulse of this. I think it sounds like a great idea, Bill. Um, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with you know, some great issues raised by everybody on this call um, about you know, need, how much space would we need? We, and as you know, Howard raised one park that certainly uh, we would put on a priority level that would need funds. We have other issues. Tammy talked about um, there are funds limitations to all this and, and this would be a, a, a new wrinkle in our park system and certainly would be a nice value added asset if there's a place for it and there's, right. a, there's a demand for it, but right. the fact of the matter, it costs, it, it will cost money. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's always a, a stickler. So th that might be the best way, Bill, is, is I, I really don't think that this board is gonna be able to advance much of anything until we have a public forum. And perhaps we could start a process on that by having someone come in uh, who has knowledge of these things or even Tammy from the knowledge she's accrued uh, to at least uh, give us some structure as to what the options are and then put it out for community feedback and see what kind of demand there is. Obviously, if that, if that club was the only folks that were really interested in it, well, then that probably drives a, a pretty short discussion. Sure. Understood. All right. A anyone else on mountain bikes before we move on? All right. Uh, the housekeeping thing I usually do at the very beginning, I did not do, and that's our minutes from February. Oh, Hopefully everyone had a thanks. chance to see them. Um, I'll take a motion in a second for their approval. I, got, uh, I have a, a motion and I have a second, I have a second. All right. All in favor of approving the February uh, meeting minutes, aye. aye. Thanks. Aye. All right. The minutes have been approved. All right. Um, Moving on to, we do not have a BOC rep here, so we will skip that portion of our uh, um, reporting. Uh, we do have a school board member with us, so I'll, I'll ask if uh, Director Babson has anything for us uh, from the school board. Sure, just a couple quick items are pretty exciting, I think. Um, I don't know if you guys already covered it. I was a little late to the meeting, but uh, the tap trail is uh, upon us which is uh, amazing. You know, it's been uh, in the works for a long time. So I, I think that that's great news. And then for those of you who might not have caught it um, on our must see TV uh, on Tuesday night, we <laughs> had a big moment where um, we passed a resolution to accept bids for um, the yeah. wellness and accessibility project at the high school. So. Um, and we're actually scheduled to, to move on that very quickly. Um, shovel in the ground, probably April 12th. Um, wow. Soon there wow. After, yeah. So very exciting. I think we're all really, uh, we've dealt with a lot of issues in the board as many people have over the past year. And this is a, a clear sort of feel good moment. Um, I think despite some pretty vigorous discussion here and there, we all, voted for it. It was a 9-0 vote. So I uh, wanted to share that with you. So those two big items. That's great. Um, that's, that's terrific. Yeah. And, you know, this is very relevant for Parks and Rec because, you know, this is, it's public, pub, for public use. And I think with the TAP Trail, you, you've got two major projects and, you know, not to editorialize too much, but I think we've all learned maybe the value of being outdoors a little more this past <laughs> year. Um, <laughs> With, with so many restrictions on, on indoor um, participation and, and movement. So um, yeah, wanted to share those two items. That's terrific, thank you. And thanks, uh, 
to the school board for their their help on all that. Any idea of a with, with the time understanding the timeline is is not even worth the uh, paper. It's printed on in most projects, but is there okay. at least a ballpark idea of how long a project that will be at the uh, at the high school? Um, don't quote me on this. Uh, I don't have my my <laughs> my dates in front of me, but uh, I'm guessing you know a, a a year and a half probably. While you know while we're still in the meeting, I can circle back and get you an exact <clears throat> timeline on that. That could be useful for you guys to know. But um, but Sarah, who's our other liaison, um, it's my turn tonight. And she could probably break down a, <clears throat> a very detailed summary for you as the chair of facilities and also uh, the steering committee for that project. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a really fantastic addition to our community. It's very important for our, for our learners um, in the high school and for our educational community, but you know, we're such a big part of this, of our community in general that, um, and it's accessible to everyone in the community. So um, it's, it's a really good, good thing. That's great. Great. Yep. Thank you. Any, any other questions for Andrew and the school board? All right. Well, then we'll move on. We don't have shade tree here tonight. And so we are, we have one more old business and I know Tammy at some point will materialize and, and do the, uh, the update project update. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of uh, willows, dogs, and if there's any updates, uh, I'll let Mary uh, update us on anything that is new there. I, I think we're probably in a similar uh, posture as we were with some of these other issues about a desire to have public meetings where people can actually come out and talk about things, but there may be some other things happening uh, behind the scenes. Um, yeah, um, I had a chat with uh, Lisa Borowski, I forget what day, because <laughs> they're all the same. It was probably a Thursday because um, uh, she just wanted to, you know, be brought up to speed. And I guess she's been getting some input from <laughs> on both sides of the issue uh, from her constituents. Um, uh, so we talked about the issues, you know, the increase in the dog uh, problem in the park, probably due to COVID and possibly due to people catching on that Radnor is more liberal than, than the surrounding townships. Um, Lisa actually proposed, um, I hadn't thought about this. And I'm not sure it totally addresses the problem. Maybe it relieves the problem a little bit. Maybe having, <laughs> I don't know whether this just makes the problem worse or it makes it better. Having an additional dog park on the other side of the township. Um, and she was thinking maybe a parcel of property like um, at what I call a sloping meadow over by sawmill. Between sawmill and Skunk Hollow Park, there's like that sort of hill of grass that doesn't seem to get, every now and then somebody sleds on it, I guess. Um, she thought, you know, she just offered that up as an idea, whether, you know, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. We talked about possibly clearer signage. Uh, we talked about revising our leash law and our dog ordinance. Uh, we talked about, oh, and obviously we talked, I raised the issue of uh, concerns about dogs jumping on people who come to uh, the Willows Mansion for events once we get the, man the mansion up and rolling again. That's a big concern for us at the Willows Park Preserve, but also um, our, the caterers were trying to sign. I think we, I've mentioned that before. They're really not happy about having dogs running around. Um, some people were like really, uh, who talked to Lisa, really loved having the idea of their dogs running free and jumping in the creek and having fun. And other people were horrified that dogs aren't all on leashes. So we've, we've got a real divide that we're working with here. So heads up on that. Um, uh, Let's see, what else did we talk about? We, were we, we, we did a little crazy math and decided what we need to come up with is some sort of solution that gives these two very polar opposite sides 75% of what they want. And I know that adds up to 150, but you guys know what I mean in negotiations, if you find a way that somehow everybody gets 75% of what they want, not like a zero sum game or a 100 sum game. Um, we talked about some of the, the um, accommodations that some of the township ordinances have. And again, I think it's true different in Lower Marion where they have the equivalent of adult swim for dogs off leash, uh, different places in parks where dogs can be off, off leash at different times, uh, trying to match up, you know, what are the prime times for dogs running off leash versus when's not a good time, figuring all, that all out. We talked about enforcement and the difficulties of that because who has the budget for enforcement? 
So we just, I guess what I'm saying in a long-winded way is we talked about every issue we could think of. We just sort of brainstormed. And, you know, the, the conclusion was we need a big meeting with everybody who's um, got a dog in this fight uh, able to be there to discuss it. We, we need, you know, we need a big meeting on this. We need everybody who wants to be heard to be heard. We need everybody who cares about this to know there's a meeting where they can voice um, their opinion. So that's, you know, and I think we were sort of that, that's where we were a month ago anyway, but I, I think that's still where we are. We need to open this up and get input from everybody, both their opinions and maybe their very creative ideas that they had not thought of, that we have not thought of before that might, might at least mitigate the problem if not solve it entirely. So that's where we are. All right, thanks, Mary. A anyone else with uh, comments or questions on our dog issue? Christina, go ahead. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> Reach higher. <laughs> no, I'm like, um, just, uh, just a couple of comments. I did a little bit of research on this and I can share it with everybody, but I went through and found like the best dog parks. I'm not the dog parks. I found the places where dogs, like where are the parks that allow dogs and what do they do and how are they rated? And by, by far in the United States and especially in the Northeast, if you look, I mean, if you go a kind of outside of our zone, the ones that allowed dogs were the ones with leashes. And the, it was extremely clear. I mean, they, they even went through in detail in terms of why they require leashes. I mean, I read about an incident recently where a dog um, actually has Alzheimer's and the owner oh. really didn't know. It's very sad that you can even think that it, but long story short, there was an incident because the dog's sick and the owner wasn't completely aware and there was an issue, right? And then people say, you know, well, would you allow your child to be kind of walking around without you with them, right, to help them? So I'll share with you the research. I just thought it was interesting to look at the top dog parks, why they're so, why they're constructed the way they are. So it, it's like what you said, Mary, the ones that did the best, that got like the safe, that have all the things are the ones that have dog parks designated where the dog has to be vaccinated you know, all that stuff. And he walks in his little park and he's safe in his little world or she. Um, so I'll share with you the, um, the research on that. The other part that I wanted to bring up, and I know Tammy brought this up, but I thought it was an excellent idea um, that I think Laura Marion or someone's doing is that pilot program for those um, retirees or somebody to walk around as chaperones to kind of help facilitate that. I thought that's an excellent uh, idea. I was wondering, and Tammy, I know you might have People throwing things in your car. I hope you're safe. But um, I was wondering if we could do, and I don't know if we don't if we do this, but if we could do like a pilot program to maybe try that. If you know, because I think that would also give us a pulse in terms of what needs to be done at where, and probably fulfill a few needs that we have. If we can get some folks that do like a pilot program, maybe a couple parks, not make it some big deal, and just get an idea of kind of, and then look at the results from maybe one good year and to see what that brought to us. I think it also give us a better hands-on of getting some of these projects, you know, worked on overall, but I think it would help us with the dog issues. So um, I was just wondering, Tammy, is it possible that to do a pilot program only for this chaperone or I forget the name you called it for these park stewards, I think you called it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they were called park stewards. Park stewards. So I was just wondering, do we do pilots? Is that a possibility just to kind of get an idea of what would be in it for us and if it would be valuable for us? Um, well, I, I think anytime we can have people out in the parks uh, observing and collecting data uh, in any regard is a great thing. Um, I know just for my own my own self, when I'm out there in the parks and I, I see things and witness and observe, it's it's amazing the, the information, the data that that gives you. Um, now, Lower Marion's situation with their steward program is they do pay uh, the folks that are out there. It is a, a part-time person that is, you know, hired by the township and managed by the township. So um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, you know, we, we are able to funnel that into our budget at this given time. Uh, but maybe there's an opportunity to get a volunteer, uh, you know, our volunteer group. I know we have a lot of very active uh, volunteers in the community. Look at all of you. Um, you know, that are always more than willing to, you know, uh, put forth their time to help benefit the township. So it's certainly possible that, you know, we could do it in that fashion. Like you said, you know, as a pilot, 
you know, maybe that would be the way, the way to approach it uh, to make it feasible, at least on the onset. You know, Tammy, it might be a popular thing, especially after this year where everybody's decided they love the parks. Um, <laughs> and especially if there's somebody who's going to bring their dog back there while they're doing their stewarding. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like an ambassador thing and a kind of, a, you know, hand out a little note saying, you know, you really should have your dog leash here's the, or, you know, whatever. Or, I don't know, people who just sort of cajole people into being compliant and also <clears throat> report on anything we need to know. Obviously, they're not going to try to get into any sort of altercation with anybody, uh, one hopes. Um, but it might, I, I, I think you're right. I think people would volunteer to do that. Um, volunteering to spend time in a park, helping the park be a better park, I think would be pretty appealing to a lot of people and fit their schedule and be a way to contribute to their community in a way that's not particularly burdensome. Um, and, you know, and if there's a t-shirt involved, I think you're golden. So, you know, just give people a t-shirt. <laughs> we, we, we can also help Radnor with like- Township yeah. Park Steward. Scheduling and things like that. Like, I mean, I'd be more than happy to help volunteer to, to help coordinate that. And but I think a volunteer is even better, but I think with COVID, somebody be more than excited to jump on this. And then it would give us data right back on some of the stuff that That's we're trying too. to do. Yeah, you know, so that could I be think part of them. Yeah, it's like that could be part of their role. Do it. Right. So that's why I just wrote down like pilot program. I think if we kind of push it that way and then we take some data after a year, we see how and we also could make it a big deal for them. Like, you know, kind of put them up on this. You know, these are our, the store team and this is where they're assigned. And, and you know, and it's funny because you probably get a little bit of increased compliance just advertising in our cheerful chipper, chipper way that we're going to have these park stewards and they're going to help with. And they're volunteering. And making sure dogs are you know, to slide that in there. And I think, you know, people will think, oh, okay, well, the cops, the cops waiting behind the bush now, so maybe I better behave. I mean, I think you get a little bit of additional compliance when people know that their behavior is actually being monitored, um, even though they know they're not going to get a ticket or anything like that. But still, people behave better when they're being watched. Anyway, that was just my only thought. I just was going to, um, I just thought it was a fantastic idea, and I think a good way to slide into that without going, like, nutty and get a pulse. And maybe we select a few parks. I don't know, whatever you guys think. But that was just my only suggestion. That's all I got. Good idea. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the dogs? Okay. Christina, yes. I think, thank you very much for, for the work on that and for the idea. I think um, over the last several meetings, there's been some really nice discussions on this topic. And I think we've fleshed out um, in, in, our, in my line of work, we talk about issue spotting a lot. And so we, we have done a lot of issue spotting here and potential solutions and hangups and whatnot. And I think uh, hopefully we can get to a point where we can have these meetings. Uh, because I think we have a nice framework here uh, that we've uh, you know, started to lay, lay out. And obviously there has to be a nice balance. We have so many parks and they offer so many things, so many different things to so many different people. We have to make sure there's for those who don't care to have dogs around them uh, and room for folks that do want dogs around them and, and things. Like that. So I think we're, we're heading in the right direction on that. And hopefully we get some public input. It sounds like some of the commissioners are engaged as well, which will help help the dialogue, uh, try to um, make sure as a community, we're happy with where things land. Um, um, just one thing that I had to add, I did have a chance to speak internally with the chief of police and, and our township manager on the topic. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we really would like to see the parks board work through as well is, you know, we have that, Mary, I know you presented it in your um, Barks in the Parks presentation several months ago. Um, we have that incongruency that exists right now with regards to how the code is viewed relative to parks with regards to dogs. Um, you know, we have that ambiguity of, you know, having, you know, being in the park with, if you're permitted, you know, with a, with a park that permits dogs, having your dog under control, but then the at large um, area and section of the code is really essentially dictating, um, you know, under control on a leash. So there's an incongruency within the code. And I'm not sure if when um, the latter part of that was codified, which I think was like in 2013. And then the park code, I think, was codified in 1979. If it was just a matter of not catching the park code up with what the at large code was. But that's something we, we definitely want to take a look at. And as a result of you know, the discussion migrating out of this board, um, put forth some sort of attempt to correct. Um, you know, so just yeah. to have that in the back of our minds, Mary, I know you're, you're 
probably most intimately familiar with it because you did take all those um, snapshots of the data out of the code, um, the code book online. So that is, a, you know, that's a significant piece of incongruence that exists there that yeah. we want to clean yeah. up. Um, we also were very supportive of uh, the, the notion of permitting. Um, we really like the idea of being able to control the, the, the facilities, the parks, you know, the dog park, even over at Harford uh, in terms of residency. Um, and then obviously vaccinations and, and pieces like that, which oh, seem no. to be the added benefit. We really like that. And, you know, even though that'll be, uh, that would be a new administrative piece for the township to take on, it seems like that could correct a lot of concerns um, and, and maybe just re reduce the overall impact on these facilities as well. Um, you know, we're seeing that the Hartford Park Dog Club or Dog Park being overrun um, over there by residents, non-residents. I mean, there's a lot of people using the park. Um, we know there are a lot of non-residents. The Hartford Park Dog Club, um, for those of you who don't know, has disbanded. So mm -hmm. they used to be a a nice group to sort of police issues informally. Um, you, know, you know, like you mentioned, Mary, you know, sort of a soft way to, you know, kind of investigate and communicate um, with, with folks that are using the park. And they no longer exist. Um, Cindy mm. Spurtle, who was their fearless leader, she moved out of the township um, and just, you know, they disbanded. And I know they had a they had made some contributions based on the money that was left behind in their coffers to the canine uh, and to our department, which was fantastic. But now we no longer have that group. So I'll be surprised to see what comes out of that once, you know, the Hartford Park uh, trail construction completes and the park sort of opens back up again. Uh, but, the, you know, those, those were two of the thoughts that we kind of had um, on the forefront and overall just sort of, you know, eager, uh, I believe, to sort of see what comes about and try and actually create something that is a little bit more structured in terms of how the dogs are, you know, are, are you know, uh, the, the policies are observed, especially with regards to the willows. Good, that sounds productive. Tammy, first, is a, it's a refreshing of recollection. The, the permitting idea would be that one would not be permitted to have their dog in a township park unless they were permitted? Right. Right. So they would have to have, you know, some sort of like a display bracelet or, you know, a tag or some other, you know, form of identification, you know, something that's visual, you know, that folks could see. Thank you. Because people get registered with the county, Tammy, I'm sure you know, but like, it's not, it doesn't even require anything to do it. I mean, you just like fill out the form for Delaware County and to say that your dog has a license, but I don't know if you guys have done it before, but it's like they don't even ask for like vet records or like because they want to know that they've had rabies done and all that stuff but you know I don't know if you guys have gone through that process before but mm -hmm. that would be good if we had something like for that yeah I mean I do it I don't know why I do it I just do it because I'm just like one of these people but like every year I register <laughs> Sadie but like I go online I fill it out I pay like $26 for the year but they don't ask my vet records they don't ask anything and they give me a, count a license for the county what happens when you don't have a board of health? <laughs> well, I was going to say, so it'd be great though, Tammy, even if somebody like didn't have their license or whatever we do like with them, as long as they were like, they have it right, they're registered, that we're good. That to me is a huge part of this is that like, even that, I think a picture of the dog, right? And a little profile. So we all know that kind of stuff, I think goes miles. It actually does scare people a little bit in a good way. So I'm with you. I think permitting is a huge thing um, for that. So Mm -hmm. These are all good ideas. Yes. I'm willing to help them whatever you guys need help with. So with that, the dog stuff and the pilot stuff. So thank you, Christina. That's great. Sure. All right. Any, anyone else with anything on dogs? All right. Thank, and thanks for all again for a nice uh, discussion on that. Uh, Tammy, <laughs> I've run out of bullets. The only bullet left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're in a position to do I am. <laughs> project update or not. I know you were concerned about being in, in transit and now dodging debris as well, apparently. I am. And I reached my destination. And, you know, ironically, the, whoever it was that threw something at my car, they were walking dogs. <laughs> I don't so, want to speculate on what they threw at <laughs> the car. I know. Me too. <laughs> and I'm, I said to Kyle, I said to Kyle, because I, I was on mute. I'm like, 
did they throw a poop bag in my car? Like, it was very bizarre. It was very uncharacteristic <laughs> of Collegeville. Weird. And had you, had I not been on this call, I would have turned around and went back. <laughs> well, um, maybe it's good you didn't. Could. I I'd have gone with so you. Maybe they would have, they would have sicked their killer corgi on you and it would have oh, been an ugly scene. <laughs> probably. Wow. That's all right. Coincidental. I know. Crazy. Um, so, okay. I can, uh, I can jump in on park stuff right now. Just I'll be brief. So a couple of quick highlights. Uh, Emlyn Tunnel and the Septa Bridge structure removal is slated for March 26th, 27th, and 28th. Mm -hmm. So God willing, I hope this program happens and we can get it, or this project happens and we can get that moved out of the way. Um, you know, so the rest of, you know, Little League and softball can be, you know, completely not disrupted for the rest of the season. So that's the goal. Um, we don't see any changes or issues, um, any snags that could happen at this point with that. Um, in addition, uh, just kind of switch gears on Fenimore real quick. I know I talked extensively last, uh, last month about uh, the, the project and the changes that we've had um, and the grant submissions, of course, that we've been going through. Uh, we did find out this week that we received $50,000 from the DCED. Um, so that's five oh fifty thousand dollars still a lot of money um, to put towards the project. Uh, it's from the Keystone Communities Project Grant. Uh, we still have two others that we're working on, which is the DCNR, um, which is their uh, Community Conservation Partnership Program. And then we have another DCED that we're also working on uh, with the Greenways Trails and Recreation Program Grant. So those are a bit heftier. Um, I, I want to say the DCNR, we're probably going to be at a minimum at about a $200,000 ask, and the DCED is going to probably be somewhere around one hundred and twenty-five. dollars So those certainly could uh, bestow some great funding uh, back towards the project, which would be awesome. Um, so we're looking forward to continuing and, and moving with that. And as I had mentioned before, once we start to really narrow down and finalize uh, the, the, the final detail and pieces of that uh, plan, uh, the design plan, I will bring that back to you guys to take a look at. Um, Odoricio Park and Cowan Park, the basketball courts, as I had mentioned, we're working on getting those design plans completed as well. Uh, we did receive a draft, uh, which we sent back to Carol Engineering to incorporate some revision. So as soon as we get those back, um, which I hope to have those for next month, I can bring those uh, to this board to take a look at, um, you know, just to at least be able to put them up on the screen and kind of give you guys an idea of what's going to happen. Um, even though it's basketball court renovation, um, but you can, I'm sure, envision, there are some sort of situation changes slightly at Odorisio uh, that will shift the court back slightly so that we can capture uh, a little bit of a buffer in between the parking lot and the start of the court because right now those two abut up to each other very significantly um, and as I had mentioned before a safety hazard that we want to address. Um, and the only other uh, park update unless you guys have questions uh, with some of the detail that I put in my report it's been a busy couple months um, is Veterans Park where we are still working with uh, the American Legion as a matter of fact we have another meeting set up for next week to have uh, more discussion uh, on how the paver program is going to work uh, that they're coordinating as part of the project uh, so that we can establish the memorial recognition within the park. So that's moving along as well. Um, and obviously once we get into more detail of what that's gonna look like, um, again, all pieces and parts that'll be brought back to this board. Any questions on any of the park items or? Tammy, I, forgive me, I, one second. Um, I thought I came across the notes, there was, a, is there a new environmental study being done at Fenimore? Did I come across that or is that I, was that a misread for my? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what that is. No. Okay, I, I might've misread it, I apologize. I, I thought okay. I saw more environmental studies being done or something. Uh, we, had some, we had some testing done about a year ago um, on percolation of the ground when they were putting together the stormwater plan relative to the new construction plan. But that, that was way before COVID actually. So that, I think that was even probably November of 19. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I, I just do have one uh, comment, I guess. Uh, last year, um, 
you know, with the with the good weather outside and everything, and everybody wanting be to be outside and playing on the playground, I I was told that they made a phone call to the school about us using uh, Bo Connor Park on the basketball courts, um, and we, you know, it was, it was a, the girls team that went over, but. Um, what they did was uh, there were some kids out there, I guess, that wanted to also jump on the on the basketball court at the same time. And it got back to the uh, the high school that we couldn't go out as a Radnor High School team and use the park, which I thought was kind of odd because that's the community park. And the, the girls that we normally go out there and play with, um, you know, there was a time when we were at McCrone Park and there was a little girl with, that was pushed off by some boys, you know, and they had half the court and we had the other half. And we went down and the girl was from Lower Marion Township and her mother just happened to be in that area and start, just decided to stop by. But we invited her to play with us um, now, my thing is, is there, is, is there a problem with us using the basketball courts in the township when they're part of the community? I mean, it just so happens that they're on the basketball team, but, and, and, you know, it came up with, um, I wish the commissioner was still on the phone, on the line, because uh, I, I thought it was rather odd. We were all a part of the community. It was a part of the Radnor basketball team. And we just decided to go outside and play. Is, is there an issue with that? Or am I reading this wrong? Or could somebody help me with this? When did that happen? What, what was the timing of that? Was it- That was, was... Towards, um, towards like August of last year. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously groups like organized groups that want to use the courts um, is something that, you know, we've we've tried to temper, especially in the last year, um, just given COVID. And we know that once the parks did open back up in, I think it was late April, early May, um, you know, we tried to make sure that the parks were available for the community and the neighbors. Um, so I know we as a department, we refrained from any formal permitting. Um, the only time that that changed was when Radnor Youth Basketball came to us, and that wasn't until, I believe, October, November, uh, when they started to use the courts in a more formal way. Yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, there's nothing that precludes a, a group of residents, you know, getting together and going out and playing as long as, you know, obviously it's not in a formal, organized you know, sanction type of, you know, like pre-planned, you know, practice type of situation. Do you, if you, if you understand what I'm saying, yes, I do. you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that would preclude that from happening, but in an organized manner, um, you know, we definitely, something we try to harness a bit just because again, gets, given the circumstances of the, the last year, and we've seen such a huge increase in neighborhood usage and you know neighborhood usage of the parks and especially at Bo Connor you know that was a park that was closed down for a year and a half where you know there was a renovation that went on um so yeah, yeah I mean if the group of girls wanted to get together and just informally go play um there's nothing that would stop that from happening and the only thing that we would suggest is you know just kind of be mindful of the residents and try and share the court a little bit if members of the community show up and, 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 and that's exactly what, how we handled it. Uh, there was one point where, you know, there were a bunch of guys out there. The guys played up to 15 and then we jumped on the court and played up to 15. And, um, you know, we mixed it up like that. And then there were some times when, you know, some, some younger girls came in and the girls were, were more than happy to say, hey, look, you wanna play with us? You know, we'll sub out and let some of you guys play with them and, you know, that weren't even, weren't even on their level, but they understood it was a community thing without me saying anything to them. And they were, you know, everybody was sharing the court together. So I, you know, and it, like I said, it got back to the, the, the athletic director at the school and he never did say anything to me directly, but I heard that it was, it was voiced that um, we shouldn't be having organized practices out there. 
and it wasn't a practice. It was, like I said, it was more of a, hey, I'm going to the court, meet us up there type thing. And I just wanted to know, you know, there was no problem with that. I, I mean, because I'm not holding an organized practice here. We're doing this drill. We're doing that drill or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. It's just. Yeah, I just. I think it sounds like it's something where it just wasn't clear. I, I seem to vaguely remember somebody reporting something to our deport department at some point. I'm not sure if it was the commissioner or if it was residents. Um, okay. But I, I know at one point, you know, we, I've, I've, cause I feel like you and I talked about this um, where we, something was reported to us and I believe Lizette in our department might've even reached out, but we didn't know any better. Like we did, you know, we, we got the message that the, you know, the school team was practicing at the, the court <clears throat> And for us, it was like, okay, well, if they're holding an organized practice, you know, let's reach out and figure out what's going on. Cause it's, you know, something at that point, you right. know, we, we wouldn't have permitted in an organized manner. Right. Um, but obviously if it's, you know, pick up playing and, you know, half court, you know, playing basketball, sharing with residents, you know, neighbors, that sort of thing where folks aren't being precluded from, you know, getting on the court, then, you know, there's certainly not an issue with that. Um, okay you know, we try to just promote the sharing, but it sounds like it was a situation where we weren't aware of it. And, and I, like I said, I thought we chatted on that a little bit and then I, you resolved it. That was just a pickup type of situation. Yeah. And, and, and I was getting concerned because I know the, the weather's about to break down as I was right past there the other day, I saw a whole, whole bunch of kids already out there, you know, starting to use the park and everything. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, let me get this straight now before, you know, the, the real season hits there. So. Okay, thank you for that. Hopefully that clarifies. Yeah, I think I did mention that some, something to you of that effect, I think I did. I'm getting old, Tammy. Well, Howard, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any, any more questions for Tammy? And uh, does anybody else have anything they want to raise and I, that wasn't on the agenda? All right, and I'm not seeing anybody on the participant list that isn't a member of the board. So I'm assuming there's no one on the public that wishes to, but Andrew. Quick thing, um, so 18 months was correct for the timeline for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank Thanks for looking into that. That's, that's, that's exciting news. It's great. Yeah. Um, great to hear. I, yeah, I double checked with Sarah though. Um, and she, she did say winter is possible. I mean, you know how it goes with construction projects. I mean, you know, there, there's going to be some wiggle room in there, but yeah, uh, about 18 months, like fall 2022. That, that, that's really exciting going from, from nothing yeah. to with it, with a month or so. Uh, yeah. On the ground. That's, that's not that there wasn't nothing. There's a, a massive. Sure. Yeah, no, no, no. Of course, hey, our children will be gone, I, Mr. Yeah. Free, our children will be done. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I, I think my son might be there for a senior year. He's just, yeah. you know, he's got a chance of running around on some of those things. <laughs> Can we start with the soccer field first? <laughs> thanks, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Right. Um, I, unless anybody has anything else, I guess uh, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. I heard a second there, too. Thanks, everybody. Tammy, uh, before we run, if on my calendar, I have us down for the third Thursday next month. I know there are a couple quirks this, this year in the calendar. Is that correct? Um, give me a second. You don't know. You know no, I just I just put my agenda in the back of a car. <laughs> Sorry, I had it on the second sheet of the agenda. Okay. Because I remember looking at it. So if somebody has it handy, they can probably sorry, spy no. it closer than I can. Um, so the second part of the agenda yeah, I had Thursday. listed. Yes. Okay. April fifteenth, easy date to remember. Yes, and I noted there. Note this is the third Thursday. Yes. Okay. I, I, um, I must I must have must have missed, have missed that. I just want to make sure while we're all together here, just to mention so folks aren't logging on the eighth and uh, wondering where everybody is. So. Yes, thank you for for pointing that out. Not not a problem. So th thank you everybody again for joining and uh, have a great uh, month and we'll see you around hopefully at the parks. All right. Bye. That's right. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Bye everybody. Bye.